great to be here with so many supporters of marriage equality today. I want to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I also want to say how fantastic it is to be here with so many people from across the political spectrum, my Labor colleagues, but right across the political spectrum and the great Australian union movement as well. And I'm feeling, actually, despite this sea of love and sea of rainbow flags, I'm feeling a bit sad and a bit sorry today. I'm feeling a bit sad and a bit sorry about this campaign that we never needed to have. I'm feeling a bit sad and a bit sorry for the young man I met in country New South Wales who said it's pretty hard coming out as a teenager in a small country town because once you've done it, everybody knows, you can't take it back. And he said to me, my family aren't very supportive. Tells a lot, doesn't it, those few words, imagining that young man's life and what he's been going through. I feel a bit sad and a bit sorry for the young woman I met in Sunshine in Victoria. Just a teenager. who said, I haven't told my mum I'm a lesbian. I'm lucky I've got my friends here and they know and we support each other, but we don't really talk much about it at school because it doesn't go down so well. So I feel a bit sad and a bit sorry for what she's been hearing and what he's been hearing during these weeks of campaigning. And I feel a bit sad and a bit sorry for John Chalice in my electorate who's been waiting 50 years to marry his partner, Arthur, and what they've been hearing, having struggled through a time when their love was illegal to now be having, not just to wait for marriage equality, but to have their relationship of half a century judged by people who've never met them. I feel a bit sad and a bit sorry for them and the 78ers who stood up just up the road here. They were bashed by police, they lost their jobs, they were outed on the front page of the newspaper and they've been fighting ever since and they still haven't won the right to marry the person they love. So I feel a bit sad and a bit sorry, and I feel a bit angry too, because today I, I saw in the newspaper a little something really special. I don't know if the rest of you have seen this ad. Now's the time to vote no, it says. A yes vote will mean radical LGBTIQ sex and gender education programs are compulsory in our kids' classrooms. It says, I wish I could use the technology properly, it's how the law works. But there may be something I've missed in Dean Smith's bill. It's how the law works. Don't wait, mums and dads, send in your no vote right away while there is still time to push back. I feel a bit angry about that sort of ad and I feel a bit angry that this decision that should have been made in our parliament has been pushed into our families and our communities where friends of mine who've been out for decades have said to their parents, how are you voting mum? How are you voting, Dad? And of course, so many of them have said yes, we're voting yes because we love you. But some have said no. How does that feel after thinking that you're fine, it's great, I've been out for decades, I'm totally comfortable with who I am? To have the people closest to you, your mum or your dad or your brother or your sister, say no to you in such a fundamental way, in such a personal way. This conflict never needed to be in people's families or in people's lounge rooms. It never needed to be in our community. We never needed to see homes graffiti. My constituents have had their homes graffiti, spray painted, hateful messages scratched into the walls of their homes. 
$122 million wasted. It never needed to be. So I feel angry too, as well as sad. But I was thinking about this morning, how do we respond to that? And I thought of Michelle Obama saying to her daughters, when they go low, we go high. We have just a few more days to go and millions of votes to collect. So when they go low, we'll go high. And we will say to people, if you believe in equality, if you believe that two people who love each other should have the right to the legal obligations and protections that brings to the respect of our community, then vote yes. If you believe that it's nobody else's business, what two people do in their own homes, in their own relationships, then vote yes. And if you want to be in a country, if you want to be a citizen of a country where we respect each other, where we accord each other basic human rights, then vote yes. And, and in this final week, in this final week, use everything that you have. I reckon probably every single person in this crowd has voted. Put your hand up if you haven't voted. No, 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 that was a trick question. Put your hand up if you haven't voted. Like, but the reason we are here is because we are the people who will go out and find those four million votes that haven't been cast yet from their friends, from their neighbours, from their parents, from their colleagues, from the person you went to school with that you haven't seen in 20 years, we will find those votes that haven't been cast yet and we will ask those people, if you want to live in Australia where we respect each other, please vote yes. Thanks.